So there are many different used MacBooks you can buy out there for at home, work, personal use, and it can kind of be hard to filter down which MacBooks to get depending on your price range. But in this video, I'm gonna go tell you what are my top recommendations for what MacBook to get for different price ranges ranging from under $200 all the way up to $800 to $1,000 so you can find one that meets your needs and your wants. Now, before I get into my recommendations, I do wanna mention that I'm getting the prices for these based off the 256 gigabyte version or the base version for storage. All the other specs and stuff, you could try to find one with better specs, but the thing is, it isn't really gonna matter too much. It's just office work. And also too, any MacBook made within the last 10 years it's gonna be good enough for office work. So don't beat yourself up trying to stick to this guide. There's many different other MacBooks out there that can buy that better meet your wants or needs, but this is just my recommendations for the average user. Now, starting off with the under $200 range, there aren't a ton of options you can really consider that aren't gonna be you know too old, but one option is the 2015 13 inch MacBook Air which you can find this for about $170 with the 256 gigabyte version. And it goes up to Mac OS Monterey, so it's still gonna support most of your applications. And it does currently support Microsoft Office. However, I think it will likely not get the latest updates probably within the next year. So definitely be careful there. But it is definitely gonna still be usable for all your web apps, all that type of stuff. And performance wise, I would say it loads things in about two to three seconds typically. So it's not perfect, but it definitely is still usable. And battery life on this too is also pretty decent. Apple advertised it new with 10 hours of battery life. However, you are more likely gonna get six to seven hours, which honestly ain't bad for a laptop around this price range. And then if you're looking for other laptops around this price range to kind of consider, you could consider getting a 2013 for 2015 MacBook Pro. And this is really similar to the MacBook Air. However, it does have, you know, a nicer display quality and a little bit higher quality trackpad. But you are gonna spend a little bit more for that. You're probably gonna spend an extra, I would say $80 for that. But you get a much higher quality display. So that's another option to consider too. And then moving on to the $500 range, there are a ton of different MacBooks you can find within this range. But I'm just gonna narrow it down to a few for you. And the first one is the 2017 13 inch MacBook Pro. And this you can find the lower end of that range for about $350. It has a newer, slimmer design. It has a retina display, which is basically Apple's fancy marketing term for if you're looking at a normal viewing distance, you can't see the pixels. It just seems really high quality. Uh, you have two USB-C ports, which is really nice because a lot of accessories now are moving to USB-C but you will need adapters for USB accessories or SD card slots, anything like that. So you need to keep in mind that there is an extra cost there. And this computer too does go out to Mac OS Ventura. So you are gonna get about an extra year or two of support for all your applications and stuff from what the 2015 MacBook Airs and MacBook Pros would get. And that's really nice because if you do plan on buying this for Microsoft Office, you aren't really gonna have to worry about updates and stuff for another two years. And performance wise too, this is kind of similar to the 2015 MacBook Air. However, I'd say it loads things in like around a second or a little bit more. And battery life too is decent. You get about six to eight hours of battery life, which ain't bad. And then on the higher end of this range, you have the 2018 13 inch MacBook Pro. And this is really similar to the 2017 13 inch MacBook Pro, but it has this thing called the touch bar, which basically allows you to do little gimmicks and shortcuts and apps and stuff. And then it has a fingerprint reader on the right hand side. And this computer too can go up to Mac with Sonoma. So you're gonna get about an extra year or two of use out of it. And you can find this for about $450. And then moving over to the 15 inch models, you have the 2017 15 inch MacBook Pro. And you can find this for about $450, $500. And it's really similar to the 2017 13 inch MacBook Pro. But again, you get that add touch bar and touch ID. You have a total of four USB-C ports and you get an upgrade processor, RAM, graphics, etc., which I don't think it really matters for office work, but it's an upgrade nonetheless. And then on the lower end of that range, you have the 2015 15-inch MacBook Pro, and this is kind of similar to the 2015 13-inch MacBook Pro. It can only go up to Mac with Monterey, so you do get a little bit less support there, but price-wise, it only costs $350, which honestly ain't bad. Now, just a quick mention here before we go on to the $600 to $800 range, 
If you are thinking about picking up a MacBook off of Amazon and want to support the channel at the same time, if you click one of the links down below and then make a purchase on Amazon, I get a small percentage of that commission, which helps out a lot. But anyways, thank you and back to the video. Now for the 600 to $800 range, this is where things get really, really interesting because now a lot of the laptops we're talking about are higher performing and are gonna be longer lasting. Uh, the first option we have is the M1 MacBook Air. And this is what I use on a personal daily basis. And I absolutely love this laptop. And it probably would be my top recommendation, even if you are thinking about buying a laptop in the 400 to $500 range, to just save up the extra money and get the M1 MacBook Air because benefit wise in the long term, it's a lot better. But you can find these for about 600 to $650 now, which honestly ain't bad. And it's kind of similar to the 2017 MacBook Pro a bit design wise, but you do get more of a wedge shape to it. And on the top here of the keyboard area, you have like your typical roll of function keys, but you do get an added touch ID fingerprint reader, which is really nice. Performance wise too, this is what a lot of people love this laptop for. The Apple M1 chip really handles tasks well, and I would say things typically load like less than a second, web pages, applications, and battery life too is also really, really amazing. Uh, I'd say you get about 15 hours of battery life for web browsing. Um, if you do have your tasks, it is gonna be a bit less, but 15 hours of battery life is really, really good. But besides performance too, this laptop is also known for being really, really reliable. Uh, the 2016 to 2019 MacBook Pros were known for having overheating issues at times and the keyboard keys would get sticky every once in a while if you have crumbs and stuff in them. And this MacBook, you don't have to worry about that. Apple fixed all those issues. And also too, this MacBook still gets the latest updates and will likely get the latest updates for a few more years. So support wise, long term, you're definitely gonna be good with this computer. And then moving over to the bigger end of the spectrum, you have the 2019 six inch MacBook Pro, and you can find these for about $650, $700. And while I still use Intel chips, performance wise, with the upgrade RAM, the upgraded storage, the upgraded processor, it kind of balances it out somewhat. And you also get an extra two USB-C ports on it and an extra inch on the display. Again, it is kind of like a 2017 15 inch MacBook Pro, just a little bit better in every single way. And then finally, moving on to the $800 to $1,000 range, you have the M2 MacBook Air, which you can find for about $850. And it is kind of like the M1 MacBook Air in a way, but you get you know, a newer design, a newer processor. Uh, you get add MagSafe charging, which is a little magnet that attaches to the side of the computer to charge it. You also get slimmer bezels around the display, which looks really, really nice. And finally, you get a newer M2 chip, which will likely get you about an extra year or two of support in the long run. And then on the 15 inch side, you have the M2 15 inch MacBook Air, which is basically the same as the 13 inch M2 MacBook Air, just you no know, bigger. But overall, I hope this video helped you find out what MacBooks to consider getting for your overall office use. I will try to link review videos down in the description if you kind of need a more in-depth uh, idea of what these computers are like. But anyways, thank you all for watching and goodbye.